Today I am showing you how to customize your own travel mug with a roll of vinyl and your Cricut cutting machine, but those same concepts can be applied to a coffee mug, sports bottle, water bottle, really anything in between. Now let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael and this is Mr. Crafty Pants, your crickets and crafting channel where I post cricket tutorials and projects and inspiration multiple times every single week. So if you're looking to master your cricket cutting machine, go ahead and stamp that subscribe button and then ring that bell for all of the notifications so that you never miss a single cricket minute. Now today is day number 11 of the 15 day crafty challenge where myself and a bunch of other crafty content creators are joining forces to help flatten that curve. And we are doing that by putting out brand new crafting tutorials every single day for 15 days all the way up until April the 8th. And we are doing that because we want to encourage you to stay home, to stay safe and to stay crafty. So please be sure to check out all those other crafty content creators. They are all listed and linked down in the description box below. Not only that, but we're also doing a few huge giveaways. There is quite an extensive list of brands that are donating all kinds of awesome crafty goodness for us to in turn give away to all of you guys at home. And it's super, super simple to enter to win. All you need to do is craft alongside of us and then post pictures of your finished projects on Instagram or on Facebook with the hashtag craft for the curve. It really is just that simple. And at the end of the 15 days, we'll draw a few winners. Now for today's project, we are leaning more on the simple and quick side of things because there are so many people who are dying to know how to customize their coffee mugs, travel mugs, water bottles, etc., with their Cricut cutting machine. So for today's illustration, I'm gonna be showing you how to do it on this mug right here. All right, so the first thing that I'm doing is pulling up Cricut Design Space and I'm gonna come over here to the left-hand side of the page and click on text. And just for today's example, I'm gonna type out Alyssa. Now I am wanting this to be a script font. So the way that I'm gonna change that is by coming up here towards the top left hand corner of the page, clicking on font. And if you'll notice, the fonts are divided into three categories. There are simply all the fonts, but then you can narrow it down to system versus Cricut fonts. Now, if you're gonna do a Cricut font, you do need to purchase them individually, or if you have a Cricut access membership, you get free access to them. And as far as the system fonts go, those are all the fonts that you have downloaded onto your computer. Now, if you would like to learn how to download all kinds of free fonts that you can use in Cricut Design Space, I will link that video for you right up here. So I think for today's illustration, I'm gonna use this Clarista font right here. And I'm gonna come over here towards the bottom left-hand corner of the page and just zoom in a little bit on this. As you'll see, all the letters inside this name are spread out apart. Now, I have seen some people who must not have known how to correct this, and they went ahead and cut this out just like this and applied it to their garment or to their cup or to whatever it may be. But I'm gonna show you how to avoid making that mistake. <laughs> so the way that you can fix this is by selecting the name. And there really is two ways that you can go about doing this. The first way is by coming up here towards the top of the screen where it says letter space, and then just clicking this down arrow. And as you'll see, each time that you do, each of those letters come closer and closer together. So the YSSA looks good, but this A and L, they're just kind of out here on their own. So we want to fix this. So I want to show you the other way to go about doing this, which is personally my favorite way to fix it. And what I'm going to do is come back up here towards the top of the canvas, but this time I'm selecting advanced and I'm going to select ungroup to letters. And what that does is put each individual letter onto its own layer. So I could literally click the A if I wanted to and move it anywhere on the canvas I would like. I could also rotate it. I can make that A a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. I could really do anything that I wanted to with that A or with any other letter inside this name. So I'm just gonna move it back over here. All right, so that looks good right there. So now I'm gonna select this S right here and just move that in a little bit closer as well. I think I might rotate that a little bit this way. Maybe even make it just a little bit bigger. There we go. And now I'm gonna come over here and grab this L and drag this over as well. Maybe even rotate it. Yeah, I kind of like it just like that actually. And now I'm gonna grab this A and bring it over here closer to the bunch, except for I'm gonna rotate this one a little bit as well and maybe make that A a little bit bigger. All right, so I think that that looks really good, but here's the issue. If I clicked on make it right now, all of these letters that we just spent time putting right next to each other, they're all separated again. 
and that's because we didn't attach them in any kind of way, right? So what I'm gonna do is come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select cancel. I am simply just gonna click and drag this blue box over this entire name, just like that. Now each individual letter is selected. Now what I want to do is come over here towards the bottom right hand corner and some people make the mistake by selecting attach. We don't wanna do that. If we selected attach, what would happen is it would still cut it out and it would still be lined up just like this but there will be cuts in between each of these letters so they wouldn't be actually attached. So what we wanna do instead is actually weld these together. Now when you select weld, all of these letters basically become one single image of sorts. They're all fused or welded together, which makes it so much easier and so much better when it comes time to weed out your design and then apply it to your service. Now that that is welded, what we need to do now is decide how big to make this name for our specific cup. And I'm gonna show you how to figure that out. What I'm doing first is just measuring out the height of the cup. All right, so it looks like it's pretty close to six and a half inches. And the next thing that we wanna do is figure out how much of the width of the cup we want our decal to cover. Now with this, we just wanna keep in mind that the cup is obviously curved and we wanna make sure that whenever somebody's looking at the cup, they can see the entire decal at just one glance. Now, I personally think for this specific travel mug that the max width I would want is about two inches or so. We are now gonna use those measurements to create somewhat of a template in Cricut Design Space to figure out how big to make our actual decal. All right, so what I'm doing is coming back over here to the left-hand side of the page, and this time I'm clicking on Shapes, and I'm gonna select Square. Now, the first thing that I want to do with this square is unlock the proportions of it. So this little padlock right here, its main goal, its main purpose, is to keep the proportions of whatever image or shape that is selected. Well, we don't wanna keep the same proportions of a square. We wanna turn this more into like a rectangle, right? So I am gonna unlock that padlock just by clicking on it. And then I'm gonna come over here to width and I'm gonna type in two for two inches. And over here for height, I'm gonna type in six for six inches. There we go. And just so I can see it a little bit better, I'm gonna change the color of the shape by coming up here towards the top left-hand corner and selecting this little color swatch right here. And I'll just change that color to white. So now I'm gonna take this name and drag it in front of this rectangle. And then I'm gonna use this rotate handle right here to rotate the name around. And I'm just gonna use this resize handle to make this image larger. And basically just use that to help determine the size of this decal. All right, so I think that that looks perfect. Now we don't need this template anymore, so I'm just gonna select that and then click this little red X up here in the top left-hand corner. And now I can come up here towards the top right-hand corner and select to make it. Teal is my best friend's favorite color, so I am gonna use this holographic vinyl right here that does have a lot of teal in it. Now sometimes holographic vinyl can act a little bit funny or weird in a dishwasher, so if you are planning on using a holographic vinyl, I would recommend washing by hand only. But if you're wanting a vinyl that's gonna last a little bit longer in a dishwasher, I would recommend like an Orcal 651 or even a Cricut permanent vinyl. And for those who are wondering, this is Cricut brand. All right, so now I'm gonna load my mat into my machine. I am just gonna tap this flashing arrow button to load the mat in. And then whenever the Cricut logo button starts flashing, I can go ahead and press that for it to start cutting. All right, so for weeding, I'm just gonna turn the vinyl towards me and I'm gonna start picking at a corner just until I can get that vinyl to lift up. Then I'm gonna pull it back very slowly, making sure that there are no pieces of our design that's trying to come up with it. All right, so we have our decal all weeded out and ready to go. Now what we need to do is prep our surface. And since this is a hard surface, what I wanna do is wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol. And I do recommend at least a 90% or higher. What this will do is actually remove any type of dirt, grease, or grime, and make the vinyl application so much easier. And while we're waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and get some transfer tape on this decal. And I am gonna use this masking tape transfer tape that I got off of shopontite.com. This stuff is truly amazing. And if you're planning on getting any of this for yourself, you can use my code, which is crafty, and that'll save you 10%. All right, so I'm just applying this transfer tape over this decal, and I'm just gonna use my Cricut scraper tool to really just burnish over top of this decal, just really wanting this decal to adhere to this transfer tape. All right, so I'm just gonna start slowly peeling off this transfer tape. 
making sure that everything is fully adhered to the transfer tape, make sure that nothing is getting left behind. And now all I need to do is line up the decal and apply it to the cup. Now I'm just taking my scraper tool and just burnishing over top of the decal. And now I'm just slowly peeling off this transfer tape. And here is our finished project. Please let me know what you thought of today's tutorial down in that comment section below. And if you liked today's video, please be sure that you stamp that like button before you go. If you would like to be a part of an amazing group of Cricut crafters where you can ask your questions, get some answers, show off your finished projects even, and get plenty, plenty of inspiration inside of a very positive community, then you definitely want to be a part of our Cricut Crafting Community Facebook group. It is exclusive to only the subscribers of this channel. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and stamp that subscribe button and then ring that bell for all of the notifications and then click that link down in the description box below to request to join. Thank you guys so, so much for watching today's video. I am so grateful for each and every single one of you all. And until next time, please stay home, stay safe and stay crafty.